I want to thank you for joining me for many of your time zone. Thank you for joining me. This is Abia State Matter, and every one of us should take it serious. The only thing you owe me is to please make sure you share this video on any platform you have seen it on WhatsApp, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, anywhere you see it. Share it for other Abians and other Nigerians to watch and also understand what's happening in Abia. Yes, we are still on that matter. Whether it is 103 billion, whether it is 38 or 39 billion, whichever it is, we're on that matter. And of course, there is a need to actually give us the clear figures we are talking about. Because I was listening to that audio, that video of the governor speaking in Washington, and the, the amount to me where we have 79 point something billion, what I'm hearing is 9 point something billion. So if we cascade it, um, it will give us either um, 38 points or it will give us 103, depending on how you are seeing it. So I think the government has a need to actually clarify these figures so that Abians and Nigerians can know the actual figure we are talking about. So you know what's trending? For the past few days now, about 48 hours or thereabouts, Abia State is trending on Twitter. Stand trending on Facebook, trending on anywhere that it can be, it can be trended. <laughs> and what is trending? It is that bombshell, that massive allegation the governor dropped on the table, which is pointing directly at the past administration of Governor of, of Governor Okezie Ibazo. Of course, both Governor Alex Soti and Governor Okezie Ibazo, they have not been serious um, love relationship. It's been it's been fire for fire. <laughs> okay. What are the issues here? The governor of Washington is doing a presentation, a speech, made some allegations. The allegations boil to billions of naira that were paid to companies um, and, and projects not executed. There were some billions of naira paid to other companies that you can't trace any documentation attached to the docu to, to the project. There are also billions of naira, about ten billion, which was also paid for for an airport, which um, uh, the governor said is nowhere to be found. Of course, I know there is no airport in other states, so it's, it's no story. That is a fact. So for us to get the point clearly, let's start by watching what the governor said in Washington D.C. Talking about corruption, <coughs> I had. Uh, set up a forensic audit uh, as soon as I took, uh, took over last year in Abia and um, so that there won't be any argument I called in uh, one of the top three audit firms in the world and not too long ago they turned in their report and some of the things in the report are frightening So, some 9.3 billion naira was paid to seven contractors for contracts that were not executed at all up to today. Another 15.9 billion naira, almost 16 billion was paid to 63 contractors with no supporting documents anywhere in the state. Another 12 billion naira was paid to two contractors for contracts that do not exist. Out of this figure, 10 billion naira was on September 25, 2020, and that is almost four years, paid to some contractor for the construction of Abia State Airport. We have spent time trying to locate the airport. Um, up to now, we have failed. In fact, one of my aides told me the other day that maybe we are using uh, native intelligence to look for the airport that we should seek artificial intelligence. <laughs> 
So as we continue to look for airports, we have also involved security agencies to help us search. And uh, so that's just an example of uh, what typically happens. And uh, when you juxtapose that uh, with pensions that we are lying unpaid for about 10 years and uh, salary areas, just what on this head in the 10 billion that was spent to build a non-existent airport was exactly the amount of money that our government used to take up the pension areas. Okay, we have seen what the government talked about. It talked about those figures of earlier ruled out. I've just shown that video for you to understand and have um, the meat of the discussion. Again, this airport thing is not a mirage. The former governor of Fido State, Governor Okezi Pazu, actually had an intention to do an airport. And the only to, to, to give you a proof of that is this video. I think where he was speaking in Lagos to people about his airport project. He was talking about the kind of airports we have seen all over the world. And I think that's the kind of airport he wanted to build in Abia State. Watch the video. We need an airport. Because if you want to create um, a commercial hub, um, access is key. Access is key. One. Two. Without deriding anybody, I've not seen one airport in Nigeria that can speak to what an airport should be in the 21st century. An airport is not a park. It's not a place, it's not a place you run to board a flight and go away. I, 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 have, I have enormous respect for, for the former governor of Lagos State. What he wanted to do around those should he scared me as a governor. Scared me. I, 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 I saw in him somebody who was thinking like me. You, you, you capture people in a place. And, and five, six, seven million people pass through should every day. That's a resource. So why don't you aggregate them, put AC, make them comfortable, put AC around the corridors, then display things for them to buy. Because as they move about, if you have your little toddler or your three-year-old, and somebody is, is uh, come and buy ice cream and you see for the Christmas, selling ice cream or something, that child, you must buy that ice cream. But you must create the ambience to enable the person Take the walk in that place with his child. But if it is rowdy and pickpockets are harassing and people are taking things, you know, my ideal airport is the airport in Dubai. If you go to Dubai airport with $200,000, you will finish all the money there. You won't go home. And people come to Dubai just to, to hold meetings and go away. So I was looking at a small compact airport that will have a hotel. Not an airport that will close after 9 p.m. An airport you can, oh yeah, I'm traveling to Lagos 7 a.m. Let me go to the airport. I'll dance in the nightclub, eat my dinner there. In the morning, I board my flight. All you want to do is to create many stations that money will change hands. That's how to grow GDP. You know, so, but if you go to the airport I use in my state, if you go there now, you will not see anybody. You will not see anything. Unless it is an owl or something wild animal, you won't see anything. And yet, calculate the number of persons that come there, that pass through there. All of them passing through the airport has money. And they want to spend the money, but there is nothing. So, I wanted to create an economic hub. A place... You can have your bed and breakfast. A place you can have a nightclub. A place you can have a conference. Set up rooms like this in an airport. So that, ah, I'm traveling, my flight is by 6. But I'll arrive at the airport by 3. Let us hold the meetings. The tea you will drink there. The coffee, the everything, the food. All of those things are happening in that airport. And you create jobs. You create, and people coming will want to go again, even on account of the airport. So, 
it is still a priority for me. But my people feel that I needed to 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 do other things, and then um, I, because I'm a teacher, I am also a good listener. I I I, I decided to. I decided to return the airport as a priority, but go back to the drawing board and start planning again, while I do what they want to see. And that is what has just happened. So it's my priority, and I'll get back to it. I'll give you that airport. To still make you know that this um, airport project is not a mirage, um, the next video you'll be watching is a video of the Commissioner for Lands, um, the then Commissioner for Lands, a large Suleiman. Um, visiting the communities which have donated land to the government for the airport project. And he was talking about, we are talking about the land, they were showing him how the land is. Watch the video. Yes, I need you to do here for me. Mm -hmm. Before I'm out direction, I do. Okay. okay. Amal, my man. Yeah. Amal, tell him. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. The Honorable Commissioner for Lands and Survey. Parasatil <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner. Yes, this video or this um, context, this issue we are discussing about has brought a lot of arguments. People are already throwing brick bats to themselves because of this particular expose by the governor, Governor Alex Oti. It is important to state this. The government should understand the implication of such witty allegations. The government should have done due diligence on making sure those figures, those numbers they are reading out are actually true and those numbers are there. The audit firm should have done a should do, should have done a very clean job so that any number the governor was putting out should be figures that we can run with. Because if this contest, if these allegations are not true, it will affect the believability of the government. To know when the government will talk about other things, people will become, um, the, the, the ability to believe the government will reduce. So it's important the government know the implication of what they are doing and the allegation the government raised in far away Washington, D.C. Just like I said, this um, bombshell have ignited a lot of conversation. The former Commissioner for Finance of Abbey State, Obi Noriako, Chief Obi Noriako Opadike, has put out a position. In his position, which is really out here, you see him, you see the headline and everything. He said that, yes, he, he did not deny the, 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 the availability of financial malfeasance in government. But, but he argued that $1.3 billion for the government of Abbey State is difficult to disappear. That's what he's saying. The former commissioner for information and also former commissioner for commerce, John Okeikalo, John Oke as popularly called, also have written, of course, in his very fiery mood. <laughs> he has written and he said that the governor is not saying the truth. He said that the said, um, he talked about the said airport and said, yes, there was an approval to build an airport and 10 billion was made available. That he himself, as JOK, announced it to the media. But that after a while, some leaders, some elder statesmen, and some, some traditional leaders came to the governor and told him that that airport project is not a priority, that they are lost, the governor should fix and conclude. And because of that, the governor shifted those funds to building and finishing roads that he has on his table at that time. 
That is the position of JOK. Again, the, the former chief press secretary to the governor, Emenanka, Oyibuchi Emenanka, has also thrown in very long reply. And his reply, he threw the lot of mud at the government of Agua State, doubting the credibility of the government in saying exactly the truth at all times. He raised issues where the government have said, in his own opinion, where the government have said some things that were not true. He made it clear that nothing like 10 billion, that the said project was diverted to other projects, just like JOK said. The only thing I need to, I need to advise our handlers, both government handlers and former government handlers, can you just reduce the insults on the messages? Can you focus on replying people without email news? Can you focus on replying people without throwing insults at the office of the governor? It's very important. Also, the other, the other way around, the spokesperson of the, of, of the government, current government, can you please remove the issue of insult to anybody? Let's focus on the issues. Let's not distract ourselves with a whole lot of this hula balloon. So, what is the way forward? Audience need to understand one thing. The money we are talking about, whether 103 billion, whether 30 something billion, does not belong to OTZ Bazo. Neither does it belong to Alex Oti. These monies belong to the people of other states. So I think this is the time for every Abian to show concern concerning what is happening in the state. Being lukewarm at this point should not be an option. Everybody should be alert to ask more questions. The past government, the past government and is is a total challenge to the present government. They want the government to come forward with the facts. They are asking the government to come forward with the facts. And I think that should be also that, that should be one thing every single Abian should be requesting for. 103 billion or 38 billion plus should not be swept under the carpet. The government of the next city should come up with more facts, which should have more details. How much are we talking about? First of all, we should have a clear definition of the amount we are talking about. Let's know it. Companies that have been paid money and they have refused to execute projects they were paid to do, let's know them. At least, if not for anything, they were paid through the account of other state so we can see the names of the company. Let's know the company. Allow us to research about their board of trustees. Then these documents should be submitted to the right authorities for immediate investigation. This is very important. These things the government should do are very important. They are very important in discouraging any other government coming in the future to get involved in financial malfeasance, to get involved in looting our funds, to get involved in destroying the fabrics that has made Abia State great. So, what do we expect from the government, the present government? A challenge is on the table. Bring out your facts. Bring out your facts. Make your facts public so that we can roll with it and submit it to every anti graft agency in Nigeria for investigation to kick in. Audience, we should not fold our hands and watch our billions of naira weeks away. Whether the past government agree, whether they are whether they're saying the truth or not, let us bring let the facts come on the table. Let us know. If the past government are saying the truth, they should be exonerated. If the past government are not, then we should kick in an investigation. 103 billion naira is a lot. Whether it's 103 billion, whether it's about 40 billion, they are all billions of naira. And any of them, any of those funds can add value to the state. My name is Emily Kirobu. I am an Abian. God bless you.